I run a ministry called Train to Proclaim. Uh, like the name suggests, uh, we teach people how to proclaim the gospel. We train people how to proclaim the gospel message. We know that Jesus said to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And that's a challenge for us as Christians, isn't it, to know how to do that. We've often heard this, the, you know, that, that scripture again and again. We've had preachers belt on the pulpit, come on people, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And many of us are, are sitting there going, how? How do you start a conversation with someone? What do you say when you do it? You know, start talking about spiritual things. What is the gospel we're supposed to be proclaiming? How do I proclaim it in a way that people will understand it who don't go to church without using Christian needs? So that's what this course is all about. And I'm, I'm so thrilled to be here and so thrilled that, that uh, this course is coming up. So you have the opportunity of learning how to create opportunities to share the gospel and how to share a loving clear presentation of the gospel. Is that good? Yes. Good, good. Just a, uh, this is a picture of my family, my wife Maria, and we've got four children, Sam, Amy, Matt and Libby, and they are 15, 13, 11 and 9. They're all two years apart, boy, girl, boy, girl, perfectly planned and executed. <laughs> I'm going to uh, do a test for you this morning. Now, I guess you, when you came to church on Sunday morning, you were not expecting to have a test, am I right? But you're going to get one. Oh my goodness. Okay, so here's your test. Which of the activities listed below is a form of evangelism? Now, you don't need to have a pen and paper to write this down. There's only seven things mentioned. And all I want to know is at the end, how many yeses you have and how many noes. It's quite easy, eh? Can you remember that? You can count on, on one hand or the other if you want. But how many of these are a form of evangelism? Number one, the winning of souls. Is that a form of evangelism? Yes or no? Okay, second one, community projects, like giving out food parcels, like uh, getting involved in things like that in the community. Is that a form of evangelism? Number three, praying for people. Is that a form of evangelism? What about this one, making friends with non-Christians? Is that evangelism? What about this one, sharing our testimony with non-Christians? Is that evangelism? I'm hearing lots of yeses here, so just keep, keep in your mind how many yeses and how many noes you've got so far. Everyone got that? Yep. Cool. Number six, modeling a godly life before non-Christians. Yep. Our walk and our talk have got to be the same, true? We can't just preach about Jesus and then not live the life. It's got, we've got to live a godly life. And this last one, answering the hard questions that non-Christians have about God. We often call this apologetics. So it's removing barriers from people from anything that might be a barrier for, to coming to Christ. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing to do, isn't it? So how many, how many uh, yeses, how many noes? Just keep that in your mind. We're going to come back to this a little bit later on. Preachers passionately persuade their people, and they preach things like this. They go, church, we must evangelize our community. And those in the, in the church clap enthusiastically. At, woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> And then, the, the, but what are they really clapping about? This is the thing, because the preacher interprets that as this. He goes, praise God, the people are really behind my vision to evangelize our community. Right? And then there may be something different going on in different people's minds if we don't know what evangelism is. That's why I gave you a bit of a test and said, what is evangelism? You know, is this evangelism? Is this evangelism? So, there could be people clapping that go, we pay the pastor to do it, and I'm going to get in behind him, clappers. <laughs> right? Could, yeah, some of you are nervously looking at me, right? <laughs> there could be people like that. What about this one? I'm already making friends with people. I'm already doing it. I let my light shine. So we need more people like me, clappers. <laughs> right? What about this one? Praise God for new prayer fuel. I really need to intercede for our community more. There's the intercession clappers, right? What about this one? Praise God, what a great vision. The church should really be doing this. <laughs> clappers. You know the one, you know, the people that, that the sermon goes straight over the top and hits the forehead of the person behind you? <laughs> the church really should be doing more of this, shouldn't they? What about this one? Only those with the gift of evangelism uh, do evangelism, and I'm going to get behind them, clappers. Don't like that one? It's getting better and better, isn't it? 
I want to mention here that I've been offering $1,000 and I've preached in a lot of churches. $1,000 for anyone who can find anywhere in the Bible that evangelism is a gift. And I'll offer it to you today. I'm confident of that and I'm not poor because no one has found anywhere in the Bible that evangelism is a gift. The two big gift chapters, 1 Corinthians 12 and Romans 12, goes through all the manifestational and motivational gifts, right? Evangelism's not mentioned. Not once. Because it's not a gift. It's a command of Christ. Amen? It's for all of us. It takes all types to reach all types. Amen? There's not just for extroverts. It's for introverts. Introverts can reach people that extroverts can't reach. I'll be able to reach people that you can't reach. You'll be able to reach people I can't reach. But we're a team, aren't we? Team is a church. We're we're a part of God's great rescue plan for the world. There is no gift of evangelism. It's like taking a scripture like, you know, love one another and saying, well, oh, no, no, well, I don't need to do that. That doesn't apply to me because I don't have the gift of love. (laughs) I don't have the ministry of love. You know, like that. That's for the people with the gift of love. You'd say, that's ridiculous. We're all called to love, aren't we? Why? Because we're commanded by this. You shall know if you are my disciples of what? You have love one for another. We can't pick and choose Jesus' commands. Amen? If he commands us to do something, it's for all of us to do. Right? So we can't just say that evangelism is a gift. So um, it's a common thing that I hear. And so there's often a misunderstanding. and, And people think, you know, it's great evangelism, but it's not for me. Or they've had a bad experience with evangelism. And if that's you, be a part of the G7 course because you might find that this tool really resonates with you and you'll have a really positive experience from now on with evangelism. Now, what about this one? I'm already proclaiming the gospel by talking to people about church and God, so thanks for affirming me, clappers. (laughs) There is, of course, the I'm clapping because everyone else is clapping clappers as well. So there's all these different things going on in people's minds about what evangelism is. Some people think that evangelism is praying for people who are not saved, for interceding for them. They think maybe sharing their testimony or inviting someone to church is evangelism or being involved in, in, you know, in, the, in the community. What is evangelism? And according to two of the world's leading Bible scholars, Dr. John Stott and Dr. J.R. Packer, They say the evangelism is simply the proclamation of the gospel. Now, I do a whole sermon on this on my own, and I'm not going to do a whole sermon just on this this morning. But trust me, there is actually remarkable agreement across the scholars about what evangelism is. I mean, they disagree on practically everything in the Bible, Bible scholars, right? You know, there's a lot of disagreeing, you know, about, you know, eschatology and on, you know, once saved, always saved, and all these different things, right? But when it comes to evangelism... In the gospel, there's actually remarkable agreement that evangelism is proclaiming the gospel message. So, this summary from Dr. J.R. Packer is excellent, and I think it's one of the best summaries you'll find about evangelism. It says, the way to tell whether you are in fact evangelizing is to not ask whether conversions are known to have resulted from your witness. It is to ask whether you are faithfully making known the gospel message. Now, I don't know about you, but I've sort of grown up hearing the message, go out and win souls. And when I go and proclaim the gospel and someone doesn't come to Jesus, I think I've failed. Maybe you've experienced that as well, and you go, oh, this isn't for me. But we're not called to save souls. There's only one saviour of the world, and it's not Stuart Miller. It's Jesus Christ. He's the saviour of the world. He's the only one who can save someone. And if I was to share with Michael here, right? Hey, Michael. And I was to talk with him and share the gospel with him, his response to that is up to him. I cannot control that response. And if I think I've got to save him, then I'm going to become a bully or a salesman and man- or manipulative to try and get him to pray some prayer with me. But I want a divine work of the Holy Spirit moving in the person that I've... You know what I mean? That's two different things. Me sharing with Michael and Michael responding to the gospel are are completely two different things. How can we be responsible for someone's response? How can we be responsible for something only God can do? I don't know about you, but understanding this releases a huge burden off my shoulders. I don't need to save the world. I just need to do what Jesus has asked me to do, is to go into the world and proclaim the gospel. 
And as I sow the seed of the gospel, which is powerful, the Holy Spirit moves upon that seed and brings people to Christ. But the results are up to the Lord. Does that make sense? So we want to see souls saved. Amen? But those results are up to the Lord. And what we really need to be asking the question, because I get asked this all the time. Pastors say to me, you know, this G7 app you've got, you know, this G7 tool, how successful is it? And I say, it's 100% successful. And they're like, what? Everybody give their life to Christ. And I go, no. But what do you mean by successful? I say it communicates a loving, clear presentation of the gospel. And if it does that, it's done the job. It's 100% successful. People get it. That's success. Because that's what we're called to do, proclaim the gospel message. People say to me, you know, how many people have you seen saved with this tool? How many people have you saved? I go, none. They're like, what? You're a full-time evangelist. You haven't saved anyone. I say, no, only Jesus can save people. But it's, I've seen a lot of people come to know Jesus. But it's not because of a tool, and it's not because of me. It's because of Jesus working in their life. And there's been a lot of people involved in that process. I'm not like the first person to talk with them. You know what I mean? We often glorify that last step. But anything you do that can help someone in the journey of coming to Christ is a wonderful thing. Amen? We're going to go back to the screen here. Which of the following activities listed below is a form of evangelism? The winning of souls? No. Winning souls is, is God moving upon people's hearts and, and drawing them to himself. What is evangelism? It is the proclamation of the gospel. It's sharing the gospel message. What about this? Community projects. Community projects are community projects. They're not evangelism unless you share the gospel while you're doing that. All these things you could do while, you know, you could share the gospel while you're doing it. You could evangelize while you're doing it. What about this one? Praying for people. That's not evangelism. That's intercession. What about this one? Making friends with non-Christians. That's friendship. People say, I'm into friendship evangelism. I go, Great. So you're making friends with people, yes, and you're sharing the gospel with them. Uh, I haven't, haven't actually done that yet. I have to really politely say to people, like I say, you're not into friendship evangelism. You're into friendship because there hasn't been any evangelism going on. Because what is evangelism? Proclaiming the gospel, sharing the message of the gospel with people. What about this one? Sharing our testimony with non-Christians. Well, our testimony is how I came to know Jesus. Some people in this postmodern era, they go, oh, that's wonderful for you. Good on you. That's good for you. Yep, that's, that's fine for you, but it's not for me. They need to hear the gospel. <laughs> they need to be evangelized. Now, our testimonies are powerful. Don't get me wrong. I'd encourage every one of you to, be, to share your testimony with people. But don't stop there. Go on and proclaim the gospel and see how it can impact their life as well. What about this one? Uh, modeling a godly life before non-Christians. That's called being a Christian. That's not evangelism. That's just what we should do. <laughs> what about this one here? Answering hard questions non-Christians have about God. That's apologetics. I used to spend a lot of time arguing with people in my early days as a full-time evangelist. I've been 26 years now as, as a full-time evangelist next month. right? And I used to have some fair dinkum big arguments with people. Two hours later, I'm walking away and I'm going, man, I spent my whole time defending my faith. I don't think I even presented it. I don't even think I actually shared the gospel. Because it's just like, you know, this, you get, why is there so much suffering in the world? How do you know God's even there? What about evolution? And I've got great answers for them, you know, and you give all these answers and it's back and forth and whatever. But then you walk away and you go, did I actually share the gospel? So now I spend a lot more time sharing the gospel and then I get a lot less questions because people are, it, it comes to the heart of where people are at. They need to know Christ. This is the difference between heaven and hell. This is the crucial thing. Not whether, you know, what happens to the starving Ethiopians or any other questions that they've got, right? They are often just red hearings. You've got to get down to the real issue. And the gospel targets that. Now, I don't want anyone going away from the service this morning going, oh, Stu just wants us to evangelize. He doesn't want us to pray or to, to, you know, to live a godly life or to, to go, you know, be involved in the community or to make friends with people. No way. I'm saying all these things are great. All these things are awesome. We should be doing all these things. Amen? Yeah. We should be doing all these things. But what I'm saying is they're not evangelism. Why is this important? 
Because if we think that we're evangelizing by doing those things, then we don't actually go on to actually evangelize. The devil loves this. He loves to confuse us about what evangelism is so that we just do what we're doing and we think that we're doing evangelism and we're actually not. And he's just like, excellent. Because he doesn't want the, go, the gospel to go out. Why? Because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. It's, this message is changing people's lives all around the world. He doesn't want people to come into heaven. He wants them in hell. And so he wants to confuse us. So it's really important that we're on the same page. We understand what evangelism is and what these other things are. These are really important things to do, but we just can't stop there. Each and every one of us need to learn how to communicate the gospel and be doing that in our day-to-day -day life. Amen? Now, I know that, that for some of you, you might go, intercession is my gift. Intercession is what God's called me to do. And that might be your major thing. But I tell you what, anyone who intercedes and comes into the presence of God and, and, and hears God's heartbeat for the world and for the lost, I don't know anyone like that who doesn't want to actually share Jesus. <laughs> Because if you're praying for lost souls, surely you're going to want to share with those around you as well. It's not an either or. No matter what your main thing is, you should still be equipped and ready to give an account of the hope that's within you. Amen? You might not be on the, the streets 24 hours a day sharing the gospel, but you can still share with those around you. You've got friends and family and workmates and and uh, people that you meet in the course of your day, that you could either give them something that they can think about or actually verbalize the gospel with them. Amen? And so that's what this course is all about, is to, to give us some tools to be able to do that. Now, the question that we've got to ask from here is, what is the gospel? Because it's one thing to say, well, okay, yep, evangelism is proclaiming the gospel, but what is the gospel? Because Paul warns against preaching false gospels. So we don't want to get the gospel wrong, do we? We want to know, what is the gospel? Now, the gospel, uh, some people talk about the gospel of the kingdom, and some people talk about the gospel of salvation. Well, they're both right. It is the gospel of the kingdom, and there's a wider view of the gospel than just the, the, the gospel of salvation. But you've got to be saved to get into the kingdom. <laughs> How can you come into the kingdom, from the king, kingdom of God from the kingdom of darkness unless you're saved? You need to hear the message of salvation. And so the, uh, the, the gospel message that we're learning is focused on salvation. It's so focused on getting people into the kingdom. And from there, there's a process of discipleship that continues uh, where people learn more uh, and come into the knowledge of God. So as far as salvation goes, I think there's three things that we've got to communicate. We need to communicate why we must be saved, how Jesus can save us, and what we need to do in order to be saved. If you miss out any one of these, we're in trouble. Why? Because if you come straight up to someone, you need Jesus. Do you know Jesus? And we're straight into Jesus. People, I don't need Jesus. I, you know, get, get lost, mate. I'm happy, thanks very much. You know what I mean? A lot of people, particularly in our Western world, are just like, no, 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 I'm happy, thanks. I'm, I'm all good. I don't need your religion. Because Why? Because they don't know why they need Jesus. We've got to start with the first point, why we must be saved. Once people understand that they're made by a holy God. They're going to stand before that God when they die. Death is not the end. When they stand before God, they're going to give an account of their life. And God's got some laws that he's requiring them to live by, and they've broken them. They've lied, they've cheated, they've hated, they've stolen, they've done things that are wrong. And when they stand before God guilty, there's no way they can be led into heaven, a perfect place, with that guilt on them. But Jesus came and died on the cross. He paid the punishment. See how when you bring that into context, all of a sudden Jesus becomes important because people have no need of a savior unless they first know that they're a sinner. They're not going to get converted until they get convicted. They need to understand their sin and the position they're at with God before they're in a point where they go, okay, now I understand I need help. And when they're at that point that they need help, then they look to Jesus and what he's done. And that's the second part, how Jesus can save us. His death on the cross, being punished for everything that we have done wrong. Making that way possible to be forgiven and live with God, both now and forever in heaven. Amen? 
That's a wonderful thing. Now, that's the heart of the gospel. Obviously, you can't miss that out. <laughs> the last part, though, you can't just communicate why we need to be saved and then what Jesus did on the cross and, and how Jesus can save us. We've got to go on and communicate, well, what do we need to do in order to be saved? Otherwise, how can people respond to the gospel? So the last part is that we need to, what we call it, repentance. We don't, we've removed all the, the Christian needs out of the presentation. You'll, you'll see it, um, those of you who come to the course. Uh, we talk about turning away from the wrong things in our lives. And instead of making Jesus Lord of your life, we talk about surrendering our life over to Jesus, making them him the number one priority of our lives. Because when we surrender to Jesus and we make that commitment to turn away from the wrong things in our lives, God promises us forgiveness and eternal life. Amen? Amen. Which is a wonderful thing. So that is the heart of the gospel. Now, other scholars, now when you look at um, some of the scholars and, and what they say are the key ingredients of the gospel, there are some scholars that say there's like five ingredients, some say there's four, some say there's six, you know, there's, the, you know, there's different scholars. But we, if you were to summarize the, the, the scholars, there's common ones that come up all the time. And most are in agreement that these five ingredients are, are part of the, the gospel. There is sin, righteousness, judgment, Jesus is Savior, and Jesus is Lord. No sin, we're all broken God's laws. Righteousness, our righteousness is filthy rags. We need the righteousness of God. We need to be forgiven. We need to be cleansed. Judgment, there is a judgment to come. There is a consequence for our actions. Now, that's the problem. That's why we need to be saved, right? John 16 verse 8 says, Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit coming to earth, and he says, and when he comes, he shall convict the world of guilt in regard to sin, righteousness, and judgment. So when we preach that sin, righteousness, judgment, people come, are convicted. They're thinking, what hope do I have of making it into heaven? With everything I've done wrong. And then Jesus' as Savior comes in, his death on the cross. And then, of course, we've got to proclaim him as Lord. Because Jesus, you can never change or Jesus down the middle. Oh, I'll have him as Savior. Oh, but I'm not going to make him Lord of my life. He's either Savior and Lord, or he's not Savior at all. The way to make Jesus our Savior is to surrender our lives over to him. To put him in the right place in our lives. And then he promises us the benefits of him being saviour, which is eternal life and a whole lot of other things, as you know. Right? Okay, there is a massive crisis in the church. Most Christians cannot articulate the historic gospel message. If I were to ask you here this morning, how many people here, prior to me letting you know what the gospel is, would have been able to clearly articulate what the ingredients of the gospel are? in some form or another. Okay, a few hands. If I were then to ask those who put up their hands, if I could bring a non-Christian to you right here now, could you articulate the, hist the historic gospel to those non-Christians without using any religious jargon? Now how many hands have we got? We've got no hands. I made it really hard for you, haven't I? <laughs> But I sort of think, well, and this is why it's so good that you guys are doing this course. Because I think this is 101 in every church. We should be training people what the gospel is and how can we proclaim it in a way that non-church people can understand without using our Christianese. Amen? It should be, this training should be available everywhere. It's no wonder that most of the church wants to go into the world, but we feel guilty that we're not doing it. But that's because we haven't had training on how to do it. Does that make sense? We need to learn what the gospel is. We need to learn how to communicate it. And that's what this course is about. So I would really encourage you, make the effort to come to this course.